remember it's such a light on, and I see this creature, and I knew, I knew in my heart, I knew in my mind, in the whole night, this isn't a man. And then this thing walks across the road, takes a turn towards us, and then leaps over a guardrail. Went to look forward, and there was a big black thing, is all I can call it. Squatch DTV, exploring the Bigfoot mystery each week with your hosts, veteran researcher, author, and TV personality, the Squatch Detective, Steve Culls, and from the Bigfoot Research Project of Kentucky, Chris Bennett. Sit back and buckle up as we bring you guests from around North America discussing the Bigfoot phenomena, but not without a few laughs, too. Here are your hosts, Steve and Chris. And good evening, cyberspace. Welcome to Squatch D TV for today's date. And this is a good date. 9-20-2020. So it's a kind of a funny date. That's and cool. uh, I want to say hello to the gaggle as they wander into the chat room, as always. Hello to our good friend, B. Hi, B. John, good evening to you, Here's sir. John. Glad to see you. Walt. This is fun. Hi, Walt. We're always, we're always wondering if little Walt, right? Right yeah. down, down there is with us. Uh, hello to Walt. Curtis. Curtis, little welcome. Walt. Curtis. Mick, there's our good friend, Mick. Hey, Mick. There it is. Uh-oh. <laughs> and get naked. I like <laughs> <laughs> oh, friend, get, get Ken, naked, Ken Parnell, naked. Ken, naked. <laughs> Ken Parnell, our good buddy Ken is in the house. Again. Jay is in the house. Hello, Jay. Jay Alan, found, how are you, brother? Found and Jay again. Hi, hey, Alan. And that's <laughs> and Alan's great picture. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yes, so up. Uh, uh oh. Here comes hello, Diane. Diane. Uh, husband of our good friend Jim Jimmy. And that, that means that probably Mr. Wonton is not too far behind. <laughs> and uh, oh, Alan has now, what the hell happened? Alan went from this to this. <laughs> it's been a rough week. So Yeah, it's been a rough week. Um, <clears throat> so I hope everybody is all well. Um, just so everybody knows, guess what happened this week? I got... My furlough ended. I am back to work. <laughs> All right. That's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A little less time to spend on the squatching duties. But I got I got to say, it's good to be back to work. And, um, oh, let's say hello to uh, Jay Cordoba74. He's from Andy from Panama and Central America. Oh, wow. Welcome. Welcome. Glad to see you're tuning in. And as expected, Mr. Wonton has arrived. <laughs> Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, well, welcome, uh, uh, Andy, uh, good to hear from you. Uh, 
you know, a lot of people don't know that when we title a lot of these things, usually the day or two afterwards, we actually put the descriptions in like 10 different languages. So people from all around the world can understand what our show is about tonight. May not understand what we're saying, but, but here we are. <laughs> so let me, let me put our show placeholder up here for tonight. And, um, our guest tonight is Mr. Jason Weaver, researcher from out of the great state of Georgia. Hello, Jason. Hey, guys. How you doing? And uh, we're, we are doing wonderful. I'm so glad you can make it tonight. And uh, I know we were talking on Facebook earlier this week and uh, hadn't had, you know, Jay on before. I'm like, I got to get Jason on because, you know, he hasn't been on before. And we like showcasing researchers from around the country. Uh, especially great researchers and, and grounded researchers. And uh, he had something funny to show me, but we're going to get into that in a minute or two. Uh, but the news, and of course we had some bad news this week. We learned that uh, Florida cryptozoologist Scott Marlowe passed away this week uh, unexpectedly uh, for a lot of us. Um, you know, Scott, a uh, long time, taught a course at the community college. So we have to give him his props for that. And, uh, you know, I got to say, uh, you know, like myself, the man has been suffering from diabetes for, you know, a number of years. And, you know, uh, you know, I, that that disease can devastate if you don't take care of yourself. So, uh, uh oh, trouble is in the house as Sherry Lynn just popped. Hi, Sherry. <laughs> and uh, oh, there's our friend Pat. Everybody, uh, the gaggle is showing Pat. up. So, um <laughs> So, uh, you know, so obviously, uh, now there's another story that came out a little earlier in the week and no, we're not talking about uh, UFO slash blimps out of New Jersey. <laughs> uh, that, that, that kind of hit, um, but, uh, it, it turned out it was a blimp and, you know, there's a lot of people arguing, does that look like a blimp? Yeah. It looks kind of like a blurry blimp to me. Um, and even Goodyear said, no, that was our blimp. It was in that area and, you know, yada, yada, but. Uh, it's kind of funny, uh, Mr. Standing, uh, our, our, our good Canadian friend, <clears throat> uh, Todd Standing went to Alabama, also showed up in Alabama and actually made the, the local news, uh, with a local researcher by the name of, uh, Gwen, uh, Gwendolyn Michelle, uh, Jones. And, mm -hmm. uh, she was going to be his, um, Southeast coordinator or so, of some sort, um, and she's talking about working with him and she will work alongside standing and connect him with local resources. Jones is seeking people willing to share their stories involving Bigfoot instances. Yeah. So, um, but as it turned out a couple of weeks later, as I tossed that story aside, a couple of weeks later, say Michelle oh, ended no. up being charged for attempted murder. Ooh. Wow. Damn. And wow. as the Sorry. story, <laughs> As the, bad, story, but, uh, as the story, as the story. Now, this story comes from uh, the Outlook uh, dot com, uh, the Alexander City Outlook or Alex City Outlook dot com. Um, the story is written by Cliff Williams. It was written September tenth. We would have gotten the story last week, but we were off last week for oh. for reasons. But it says an Alexander City woman has been arrested for attempted murder in Shelby County, and that Shelby County, Alabama. Gwendolyn Michelle Jones, 39, is, is in the Shelby County Jail. Actually, she was released just a few days ago, made bond. Uh, after firing a weapon, a weapon at a sleeping male in a Shelby County home on September 2nd. Uh, it said, Jones shot a Ruger uh, 380 handgun multiple times at a victim while he was sleeping. And, he, and she missed. Um <laughs> <laughs> once the wow. victim once the victim awoke, he witnessed Jones standing across the room holding the pistol. She then fired additional rounds while standing in the hallway. So mm -hmm. he said the outlook reported last month about Jones' affiliation with the Bigfoot with Bigfoot Research as a Southeast Regional Coordinator. In the video of Jones recorded by the Outlook, Jones said she was helping conduct a Sasquatch search for a Sasquatch in a por portion of the Talladega National Forest. She said that she was in the military and law enforcement for 15 years. Jones also told the outlook she had discovered adult male and female Sasquatch in the area along with juveniles and that she left food weekly for the creatures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, Jones has been charged with uh, attempted mur murder, a class A felony, attempted first degree domestic violence, a class B felony, and first degree criminal trespassing and a class A misdemeanor. 
and their bond was set at 81 grand. So be interesting to see how that all fetters wow. out over the next year or so as it goes to trial and stuff like that. But my God, what a lousy shot. <laughs> <laughs> Bigfoot is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Joe says, "Pillar of society, obviously, oh, obviously." <laughs> oh yeah, and and welcome, Joe, and also welcome to Ed Wyland. Good to see you, my brother. So, uh, so Dude. let's get to, let's get to our guest tonight, Jason. Uh, whoop, we got a whoop whoop. Let's get the whoop whoop it off. So, uh, Jason, tell tell us a little bit about yourself, and you know, let, let's start at the beginning. So, obviously, you got into Bigfoot research because obviously something at a very young age happened. Do you want to talk about that first? Sure. Yeah, I uh, I've never been one that was fascinated with such a thing. It was just wasn't my deal, and uh, I can remember being a kid and seeing. Uh, the Patterson Gimlin film after my experience and just being, you know, shaking in my boots, terrified. Uh, I grew up uh, in a small town in upstate New York, uh, up uh, about, I'm not sure the distance, probably 35 or 40 miles south of the Canadian border uh, in a little town called Sackets Harbor, New York. It's right on La Lake Ontario. Yep. I didn't live in the village. I lived outside of Sackets and we lived on a, we had a small farm. I had a hobby farm, but we had a lot of, a lot of property. We had a, about a hundred acres, uh, but, uh, about 80% or better was, uh, wooded. So, and it was real rich land, a lot of, a lot of, uh, fresh water, a lot of game, a lot of timber, a lot of coverage. And, and it went on for a couple of miles. So it was, I always describe it as a big foot Mecca, you know, it was, it, it was, it was a perfect, perfect environment. But, um, my little hometown is a very historic town. It's kind of like, history's best kept secret there's a lot of cool things that have happened there spooky things and sackets harbor i didn't find this out until i you know dove into the the field or the the subject uh in 2009 but uh sackets harbor was actually the location of the very first uh wild man uh encounter ever recorded in an american newspaper you can actually go on the BFRO website under Jefferson County, New York, and it's the only sighting listed there. It's not the only sighting that's occurred there, but it is the only light sighting that's listed there in BFRO's uh, database. And it was printed in like 1826 or 28, something like that. Okay. Uh, if if y'all look at the screen there, uh, this was actually uh, from the Chautauqua Lake uh, Bigfoot Conference I did back in 20, I think this one I did in 2012. And I actually talk about that, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, it says, you know, Bigfoot at a large, it says, uh, actually, a uh, Bigfoot researcher from the Adirondacks New York reported at the expo, the first documented sighting of Bigfoot in the USA, in a newspaper that was, yep. was in Sackets Harbor, New York, 1818. Oh, yeah, 1818. Yeah, yep. it was around that, that time. Uh, early yeah, 1800s. it was way early. And I've been up there, man. And it is, it's very forested. I, I actually just... Drove through there, I think maybe a year or so ago, uh -huh. to go to the Rochester Winter Parafest. Oh, right. So I had yeah. to. It, it's it's outside of Rochester, but it's right next to Sackets Harbor. Right. Yep. So yeah, they I, they uh, it's very wooded up there, as you said. And in fact, the look, the town where that farmer in that account uh had his sighting was in Ellisburg. And the last time that I was in New York, I stayed at my uh, nephew's house in Ellisburg. And of course, they spelled it then with an H. Now they've dropped the H. It's Ellisburg, you know, ending with a G. But back then it was G H. So you know that was interesting to find out, considering you know the encounter I had in the early '80s. My brother had an had a incident the summer before I had my initial run in, where he and a friend were uh, we had some cattle that got out. We we were having issues. Something was spooking the cattle, and they happened to get out. We had four or five. We didn't have a lot of cattle at that point, but we had four or five uh, heifers get out and they'd wander in the woods. So we had to go down and find them and bring them back, and put them in the other pasture and fix the fence they broke. But um, on on that particular uh, event, my brother and one of his buddies, we were waiting for them. They went into a part of the woods to find a cow. We had one cow we couldn't find. And when they walked into the woods to go look for it, our other friends found the cow over here in this part of the woods and they took it back up to the house. Well, 
we waited for Jack and his friend to get back. And um, that's my brother. I, I call him Brother Jack. I usually keep him anonymous, but Brother Jack's what I call him. And uh, I hear this racket. We hear this racket coming through the woods. And my brother and his friend are, they're running their tails off. And my brother call, calls me Charlie. He's called me Charlie since I was a little <laughs> kid. I don't have Charlie in my name or anything. But he said when I was real little, my, I had real light blonde hair. And I looked like Charlie Brown. So he calls me Charlie. <laughs> so he says, Charlie, run. And, you know, I, I looked up to my big brother. So when he says do something, I did it. And we ran back up to the house because it was the wooded area. is It's kind of a, a, a hill that goes down into the woods. And uh, so he said, Charlie, run. So we ran up to the barn. And when we asked him what we were running from, his description. Now, he's 16 at the time. His description is we saw big monkey people is what he described them as monkey people. And one of them chased us. That's probably bluff charge. You know, they're pretty, pretty well known for bluff charging or whatever. So, you know, his friends razzed him about it. And, you know, I thought it was interesting that he said that, but I knew my brother and I could see my brother wasn't, he's smiling, but he, you know, he looked like he pooped his pants, you know, he, he didn't look comfortable, <laughs> you know? And then a year later, I'll, I'll go fast forward a, a year later, my uh, cousin and I were down in the woods. We had this big, huge blackberry thicket down there that we were picking berries in. And, you know, if you've ever picked black blackberries, black caps is what we called them. Um, you know, the blackberry bushes, they grow out and then they'll like, you know, cut in, cove in and, you know, they grow out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my cousin was cook was uh, picking berries on one particular part of the berry bush. And then I was to his right on another part of the berry bush. And there was a little cove in area there. And, my cousin was younger than me a couple of years and he went into a kind of a meltdown where he started like, a, just imagine a little kid going, I want to go home. I want to go home. You know, that kind of thing. And right. he dropped his berry bush or his berry bowl that we were picking berries in or with, or, you know, collecting them. And he hightailed it home because we lived next door to each other. It was a dead end road. All family lived on it. You know, that kind of thing. Yep. And, and, uh, I didn't think anything of it. I thought he was kind of a weird kid. He was my, he was my step cousin. His, my mother's brother married his mom. So, you know, he was like, she was my step aunt. He was my step cousin. <laughs> I didn't really grow up with him. You know, yeah. he was a little, a little nutty, you know, I know whatever. He's a really kind of a weird kid. And, but I thought more berries for me. Cause I love picking berries. He, he didn't wear the beanie with the propeller on it. Did he? No, he wasn't one of those, but he, okay. had, you know, <laughs> he had real thick glasses. And, you know, he used to talk about being a black belt and karate. Dude, you're nine years old. You're not a black belt. And karate. Come on. <laughs> you know how kids are. So, yeah. uh, you know, I get back to picking the berries and, <clears throat> and I always describe it like this as a kid, when you're picking berries, it's like, you know, one in the bowl, two in the mouth, you know, yeah. So, you know, you're eating and you're picking and, and if you're, when you're picking blackberries, you you know, they're in the little clusters, they're little thickets, you know, and they got thorns on them and stuff. So you got to really know how to maneuver through the, through them little thickets. Yeah. So, you know, when you see a little cluster of berries and there's a lot of black ones, you just reach in there with your hand cupped like this and you pull them down like that, you know, and if they're ripe, they fall in your hand. And if they're not, they don't. Right. right. And uh, while you're reaching into that cluster, your eyes are on the next cluster. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. I'm picking along and <clears throat> to, to my right where my cousin Jerry had, had ran, I hear a real loud, <whistles> loud whistle. I can't whistle at all, but <whistles> real loud enough to get my attention. So I look to my right and I said something like, knock it off, Jerry. I know that's you or something like that, you know, and I'm working my way around this berry thicket. And I'm, you know, picking and a few more uh, minutes pass. I hear the whistle again. And when I heard the whistle, I'm reaching into the thicket. And when I heard the whistle, I turned my head, but my hand is still going into this berry thicket. And I touch hair. And when I tell this story, I always tell people when you're picking blackberries, you can touch all sorts of stuff. You can touch birds, bird nests. I've touched snakes sunning themselves, you know, that kind of thing. It's really yeah. weird to touch a snake, especially when it, you know, it, it slides under your hand, you know, your fingers <laughs> like, Ooh, you know, <laughs> but I, I had never touched hair. So as soon as I touched the hair, my, I pulled my hand back and I, you know, I stepped back from the bush a little bit and I see this figure in the bushes and, and I'm, if you can imagine this, I'm, I'm looking at him and when I would lean to my left, he would shove his head in, into the, uh, into the, um, thicket and uh 
So I couldn't get a real look at what it was and the shape was weird and I couldn't figure out what it was. And so I'm, I'm looking at it and it's adjusting, you know, it's doing one of these, I call it a gorilla shift. You know, they're doing one of these type of things. And but when I would, when I would lean to look at it, it would purposely lean to its right or to its left and obscure its face. So I couldn't see it, you know? Yeah. And so I'm trying to figure out what it is. And I, I look down all the way down and I see the uh, three outside toes on his right foot. I see his ankle bone and I see his calf and his thigh or his calf and his thigh are squeezing together because he squatted down. He's, and I, it wrote, you know, my, as I'm looking at it, I see his big muscular shoulder and I see the no neck. I see the, the, whatever this is back here. And I see, right. but I can't see its face. But when I saw what it was, and saw that it was, you know, I call it people toes. When I saw people toes or human like toes, all the, all the um, wind just left me, I left my lungs. I was just like, <gasps> yeah. you know, and it's like when you're having a dream, a scary dream, you're trying to scream and you can't make any noise, sure. you know, it's that kind of thing. And I, I, I felt like I was being squeezed and my fight or flight mechanism kicked in and I dropped my bowl and I ran home and I told my parents, I saw a monster. I saw a Bigfoot, you know, and trying to tell, you know, like, cause I saw a Bigfoot, you know, yep. and my parents <clears throat> were, are, uh, my mom's in her eighties. My dad passed away the year after this happened. I'm but, sorry um, to hear that. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, but, um, they were prag very pragmatic. My parents grew up in the, during the depression, you know, sure. yeah. and they were hardworking farm kids. And, and, you know, I, I always say their, their idea of monsters was hunger and Hitler, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, so, you know, to, to be um, preoccupied or to, as my mom would say, you know, you're, you're wasting time with that. You know, I told my, told them I saw a Bigfoot and they said, no, you didn't. And I said, yes, I did. And, and I, you know, I started having nightmares and I would wake up screaming, sweating, crying. Now, Bigfoot. And, now Jason, how old were you when that happened? Uh, 10, 11 years old. I'm not really now, sure. I, my birthday's in September, so I, I'm not sure, but I was around 10 or 11. I, I don't remember exactly so where me, I was. Let me, let me, uh, let me go back and let me start asking questions. I know we had talked previously that it's kind of given you recurring nightmares since then. Yeah. Yeah. It has not as often, I, right. you know, talking about it. That's one of the reasons part of it the helps. darkness. Yeah, it does. It does help talking about it. Um, my, my, my question for you was, I mean, how, how, how badly did that affect you that your parents didn't believe you? Oh, well, you know, it's like, you know, my, you know, it, it was very difficult and, you know, circumstances uh, being what they were, you know, as I said, the following summer, well, I'll, I'll get to that here in a moment. Yeah. As I met my, as I said earlier, my parents were very businesslike and very, you know, they didn't have time for monsters and, and, and that kind of stuff. And uh, so they would, um, when I'd have my dreams, my mother would say, you've got to stop this with this Bigfoot nonsense. Like, you know, like a kid can control what he dreams, right. you know? Yeah. And so yeah. I started, what I realized I'd have to do is I'd have to start you know, just stifling it, just talk, bear with me. I'm trying to get a light. Oh, uh, you're, you're, okay. and, uh, <laughs> you're so fine, they, man. Um, I'm going to walk here on the back porch. So they, um, it was hard to, to, you know, your parents are, are supposed to protect you. And you know, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to talk badly about my folks. They did the best no, they no, could, no. you know, but it was difficult. And, you know, not only that we had the hobby farm and so we had, you know, like a dozen calves and, you know, uh, we had, um, or heifers and we had, um, ducks and geese and we had a couple of horses and guinea pigs i raised guinea pigs and rabbits and we had incidents like i said when our cows were getting spooked we had where they were getting into something was getting into the rabbit hutches and taking my animals and eating them and and you know we'd find them in weird places stuck in notches of trees and on top of the barn roof and you know it was just just weirdness and i i, I can't say it was them but it was just weirdness so after the incident happened where i had my encounter in the berry thicket We'd go down, we burned firewood. You know, we had a wood stove and a fireplace. Plus we harvested wood and we'd sell it by the cord. And um, so we were in the woods all the time. We harvested firewood and as long as the truck could get down there, we'd, we'd haul wood. And 
Yeah. My dad would, I, my job hauling wood was to, when they dropped the tree and they start uh, delimbing it, I was to pile the, pile the limbs. You know, that's what my yeah. job was. Yeah. And I would, I would fight with my dad about, I didn't want to go down there, I, you know, and, and so my dad would say, I said, I'll go, but you know, what I ended up doing is I'd stand by the truck or I'd lie underneath the truck. Like, you know, that's any kind of protection, but, but when they, I'd watch them and when the tree dropped and they got all the limbing done, I'd run out from the truck, pile those limbs as, as fast as I could, and then get back to the truck for that safety. And that, you know, took us into November and December of that same year. And then of course the following summer, as I said, my father, uh, he died on the last day of school. And, uh, you know, I was almost 12 at that point. And, uh, you know, my mom grieved very, very hard, you know, they knew each other since the second grade, you know, and so they, she grieved very deeply and I'm not, she kind of dropped out, so to speak, where I, you know, I had to put silly things aside, so to speak, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and sure, I had to grow sure. up fast. So I kind of yeah, just sh shut up about it and hushed about it. Every once in a while, I'd mention it. And, you know, when you start getting the, the razzing and the ridicule, you say, oh, well, I won't do that again for another five years or, yeah. you know, well, whatever it might be. And so, you know, I had coped. But, you know, as I got into my adult adult years, I always say this just just so you know this. I'm not blaming Bigfoot for my problems, but uh, my way of dealing with things on an emotional level was infected, uh, was uh, affected i should say not infected but affected greatly by this here because i learned how to how to stuff my emotions you know and you know yeah. i've got a colorful past i you know i i went i've been you know i've had uh i had a you know a, a dependency on chemicals and i drank heavy and you know that kind of stuff through my college years and and it was a way of dealing with things on an emotional level and and so the Bigfoot thing, when I started doing my partying and stuff, the, the dreams would lay off. But every once in a while, I would have one. And, and you know, I would sure. talk about it here and there. But pretty much for, for 30 years, I, I shut up about it. And then I lived in East Tennessee at the time. I went to a to – a, um, I was in a, a member of a church. And my youngest son was uh, practicing for a – I don't remember if it was Easter or something. And he was uh, – I think he was three at the time. And there was these two old guys standing behind the pew I was sitting in. And one of them was a retired park employee. He wasn't a ranger or anything, but he was a park employee. And he, one of them says to the other guy, he says, well, I hear they, somebody saw Bigfoot up there at Indian Boundary Campground or, you know, some to that effect. And I heard it. I didn't get into the conversation, but it, it kind of triggered something. And I started having the stinking nightmares again, you know. And so sure. here I am, 40. At that time, I'm, I wake up, you know, scared, crying, afraid of Bigfoot. And I got tired of it. I got sick of it. So my wife at the time, we were, we're divorced now, but my wife at the time, her and I were going through very intense couples counseling and intense where like I'd go one day of the week, she'd go one day of the week, and then we'd both go one day of the week, you know, and we did this every week. And one of those particular indiv uh, individual visits I had with our therapist I said, hey, man, it was a, he was a guy. I said, hey, man, I got to talk to you about something that has absolutely nothing to do with what we're here for. And I spilled the beans about my encounter as a kid. And he didn't look at me like I was crazy. He treated me, you know, he, he was cool about it. And he, he, he insisted that or suggested that I um, try to find somebody that's had similar accounts or similar experiences and talk about it. So first time ever, 40 years old, I, I Googled Bigfoot. And then it led me to, you know, I, I just, I got into Facebook at that point. So it led me to a Facebook group and, you know, I probably met Steve around that time because Steve and I, we've been friends for about 10 years, I think. Yeah. It's been a while. It's yeah. Been it's a been long a while. Time. Yeah. So, um, but that's slowly how I developed, you know, and, you know, I, I research, but I don't want to see him again. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, but I need to see him again. I don't know if that makes any sense. It I don't want, you know, I hear people say, oh man. I just can't wait to see them. And I go, well, you know, once you see something, you can't unsee it and be careful what you wish for, you know? Right. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, I do, you know, I don't want to see one, but I, you know, I have a drive just, but when I do see one and I've had, you know, I've been in the woods, we've had so, what everybody has. I've had grunts and, and I shine and, and, you know, a rock tosses and all that kind of stuff. But, um, but I want to be there when, I, when my next visual, sighting happens i want somebody else to be next to me so i can go 
you know, I, I feel a little bit vindicated right, because, you know, right. you, you know how it is, guys. The ridicule can yeah. be kind of kind of rough. You, know? <laughs> you yeah. see it on the news. Somebody will have some, you know, somebody will report a Bigfoot sighting and they'll have it on mainstream media news. And the news get casters that are reporting the news, they're always laughing. Oh, yeah. that guy, yeah. how long well somebody saw old Bigfoot again? Boy, he's a busy man in here. Yeah. You know, some yeah, silly yeah. thing. And you just, so, you know, that's one of the things that I loved about when I finally got into this to talk about it is that you still get the ridicule, but I, I, I equate it to being in recovery. You know, when you go to a 12 step mm -hmm. program, you know, when you go to meetings, you develop a friendship and fellowship with people and the big footing did that for me. It helped, it healed me, sure. you know, it helps me to, to get past these things. And, you know, like when I was telling you what happened as a, ch as a child, when I tell that story, I can't help. I'm, re I'm reverted right back to my 10 or 11 year old self. And I don't, but I have that. I want to pee my pants feeling, you know, and I get, I get weepy and, and, you know, it's silly. And I've had people say, man, that's what happened. And you're that scared. And I'm like, you know, he didn't try to threaten you or nothing. I, you did, you know, and you were that scared. And you, you have no idea how you're going to react when you see one of these things. And you know, I was a ten year old kid. You know how big the world looks when you're nine, ten years old. Well, sure. you, you, I, like I said, it it was like freaking Bigfoot in my yard. You know, and yeah, I used to run around in the woods. I was a country kid, so hunt squirrel and track rabbits in the winter time, and play cowboys and Indians by myself, make bows and arrows and all that stuff. And when that, when that, um thing happened between me and whatever it was and that yeah. occurred all that stuff stopped it stopped when i started talking about it in 2009 i started getting the courage to, to camp and you know i uh, i'm a face your fears live your dreams sort of guy and i think all the fun you know how much fun camping is you know i have a blast camping now but i think all that time i wasted with fear and and don't get me wrong i'm still scared but I, I, I have to, I drive myself to get through it because I'm tired of running away from it, you know? And, and, and you know, it's sad and it's sad in, in the way that, you know, and, and this, you know, a lot of times, and this is a, a lot what we've talked about in this show, Chris, and Chris will agree with me, is that we've talked a lot about, you know, the traumatic effects it has on people. And one of the things we, we don't talk about a lot is the age that it happens. Yeah. You know, you're young and it scared you, you know, to your very core and, and still you know, does. I mean, my, I'm shaking yeah. right now. I mean, you know, it's a little chilly right. out here in Georgia right now, but <laughs> I, have, I mean, I'm still, I'm nothing. There's no shame in it though. That's what I realize is, well, I don't care what people think of me. You know, I really don't but, these days, but yeah. anyway, I'm sorry. But you see how the journey has come full circle now, which is, oh, a, yeah. which is, which is the success, mm -hmm. you know, even though you may still have the jitters. You're, you're having enough courage to face your fears. That's right. And that's, that's right. what life is a lot about, is about facing fears. It sure and, is. And, and this is a perfect example of that. How, you know, why people don't talk about Sasquatch. You you have the whole witness test there. Well, you told your parents and they didn't believe you. So you're afraid. Our, bigness, our Bigfoot witness is afraid. Oh, people are going to think I'm crazy. They, they're going to tell me I didn't see what I saw. They're going to, you know, ABC. Then you have the traumatic effect because it's not in your system. Yeah, you had your your. Did you ever end up telling your brother? Oh yeah. Well, so you know, my brother, my brother had his encounter before that. You know, right? Yeah, that's right. And my brother, my brother was here this just this past year. My brother's a hillbilly. Okay, he. I mean, he lives, <laughs> he lives not on purpose, but he lives off grid, but not on purpose. I'm just, you know, my brother's a he's a bit of a nut, but um, you know, he 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 is who he is, but uh, he's not making moonshine with your. Your, uh, your 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 nutty cousin there. <laughs> no, he's not. No, he's not making moonshine. But he has, you know, he has his demons, and I don't, you yeah. know, I don't equate yeah. any or you know equate Bigfoot to his demons. But he lives not. He lives maybe, I don't know, a couple hundred yards from from the spot I had my encounter at, and he's had things happen around there. And years ago, when I'd bring it up, he'd say, "I don't want to talk about it." Well, he came down here in March and was due to COVID. He got stranded here until, I don't know, the end of July or end oh, of June. Geez. almost. And, and it was great. He's, he and I haven't spent that much time together since we were kids, you know, but, uh, but I would, I told him, you know, I live about an hour and a half from uh, Dave Becerra's uh, Bigfoot museum, you know, in Blue Ridge, right, I go right. up there all the time. And uh, I, I told Dave, I said, when you get open, I want to bring my brother up there. I was talking to him on the, or yeah, I was talking to him on Facebook 
And I, I told my brother, I said, Hey, wait, how'd you feel about going to the, up to the Bigfoot museum? He's like, not my thing, man, not my thing. You know? And so he still won't talk about it, you know, but he yeah. acknowledges it when I, I said, you remember what happened, right? He's like, Oh yeah. And he used to tell his kids not to go in certain parts of the woods down there bec- and they'd ask why. Yeah. And he'd say, well, there's things down there. I can't guarantee I can keep you safe from. And they were like, what? And he's like, well, you know, and he'd say, you know, monkey people, you know, yep. and, but he didn't talk about it much and he still don't, you know, he's a man of few words anyways, but yep. Bigfoot's not one of the words he speaks much, you know? So but, uh, anyway, our buddy Cameron Young, who was on our show uh, a couple of months ago, Canadian researcher, uh, really new in the field, uh, sent this message. I don't know if you can read it. It says, don't yep. feel too bad, Jason. I'm sure I would poop my pants too if i saw one at close range <laughs> yeah you know, uh, yeah yeah captain, call, you know, uh, you know, the, so the captain moments. says bring me my brown pants so yeah that's, that's the right yeah that's the right thing, the thing that strikes me as extremely unfortunate is when jason had his sighting he's, he's a kid he's 10 11 years old okay he's frightened scared to death he goes and tells his parents whom to him are to keep him safe, right? Right. And then, but they are are well grounded, down to earth people, no nonsense people. And to them, he might as well be saying, "Hey, I saw Frankenstein and Dracula in the berry patch," you know. Yep. And so they're just blowing that off. Ah, oh, you know, come, kids imagine. I just saw Santa Claus beating the shit out of the Easter Bunny. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So it's got to be tough, man. You know, the the people yeah. that you expect sure. to protect you. And then they just blow you off. Oh, well, okay. Just forget this. You know, and, nonsense. And, and that's, that's yeah. no, that's not a, a slant against your parents or anything like no, that. Not at all. No, it, it's okay. Because I think know? if my, my 11 year old son had come to me and said, Hey dad, I just saw a big fight. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I know. That's grandma. Don't worry. About <laughs> Mother-in-law. God. <Yeah>. <laughs> <man. laughs> that's funny. So I got uh, the, the question I have to ask is, is especially since you saw the foot. So what did this, do you remember the skin color of the foot? Well, was around the, really an- the foot was, a, was a, a dark haired, I don't know if you want to call it a black or a dark brown colored as far as the hair, but the ankle bone was, was bare and looked like, you know, like a chimpanzee's, you know, how their uh, digits look on their hand, you know, where the, yep. the hair's worn off. It was kind of like that around the ankles. Uh, the toes, I mean, they were, I mean, they were, they were toes. That was yeah. what I, that's what I knew that it wasn't yeah. an animal, you know, cause, right. and, and this is the thing is, you know, I, I, I'm an artistic guy. I, I can, I draw and I'm a musician and, you know, and that kind of stuff. And when I was a kid, I used to love to copy freehand copy, um, comic book covers. So I knew all about anatomy and, you know, what muscles look like and foreshortening and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, my mother would say, you saw a dog or a deer or something. I'm like, you no. just weren't no deer, man, yeah. you know, but yeah. what do you do? You know? So I just stifled, you know, and, and keep it. And it's, you know, it, secrets keep you sick. That's what they yeah. say in recovery, you know, and it's true. And it, I, I suffered with it and I still do, but I'm a lot more vocal about it because but, frankly, I don't care what people yeah. think anymore. Yeah. You know? Well, it's, it's really funny because many, many, uh, you know, people ask a lot of times, you know, why, you know, well, you know, there's been critics against like Bigfoot conferences and stuff like that. And <clears throat> I do it to make connections. With a lot of people, a lot of times you come out there, not only am I making connections with my friends and, and, and researchers, but the witnesses too. And I remember one witness and he's been a guest on our show, Chris, I don't remember him. He was on years back, Dave Groves and Dave had an experience and he never talked about it. And we were at the West Virginia Cabela show. They do a weirdness that at the time they were doing, this had to be like 2014, 2013. And I'm like, Dave, I said, you need to tell your story and you're going to tell it to a story and it's going to be judgment free. You need to get this off your chest. So what I'm going to do is on, on my presentation, I'm going to give you 10 minutes or 15 minutes, whatever it takes you come up here, tell your story, and I'll ask you some questions. I'll do an on the spot little interview with you, and then I'm going to thank you, and people are going to applaud you, and I'm going to thank you for your courage. So I got him to come up and do that. Wow. First time ever. And now he's a Bigfoot researcher, and now he's into it, and he never forgets that. And he's done countless interviews on podcasts and stuff like that talking about it. So, you know, you're exactly right. You need to get that 
off and off your chest. I call it, you got to peel your onion. That's what I call it. Yep. You're peeling your onion, you know? And you know, when you peel an onion, what's underneath the layer, that layer is more, more freaking onion, you know, <laughs> but you, you got to peel it off and expose that stuff. And you know, vulnerabilities, it's not, you know, we're men, we're taught not to be scared. You know, we're yep. taught not to cry about things, you know, that kind of thing. And I learned that, I, you know, I am who I am. And if, you know, if I'm, if I get, you know, it, it's not easy to tell that story. I, I, it's getting, it gets, you know, I've been telling it for nine or 10 years now, you know, but right. it, it's, it always, it's always hard, but it's always good for me because it gets it out of my head. And like I said, you know, my, my desire is, is not, I have no desire to see one other than the fact that I need to. And it's not because I want to go, Oh boy, I saw another one. You know, I just want to be with somebody that'll I, I think you want to see it again for to come full circle. I really exactly. do. Exactly. Yeah, to be vindicated and feel like and, aha, here it is. And, and actually I, I think if you were to see one again, I think when it's all over with, I don't think you would have this angst feeling. I think you would feel vindicated. Empowered, I think. Yeah. Empowered. Yeah. And I, I think that that probably you would find all this other stuff kind of just ease out out of yeah, you. I agree. So you know, um, awesome, awesome, uh, just amazing, and again, very brave of you to come forward. And and again, I want to thank you for coming on the show and telling sure, this yeah. story because this is an, an awesome, awesome story. And you've become a yeah. researcher since, and you're you're doing stuff. And obviously, you you had a connection with a brewery. Yeah, yeah. So uh, now comes the part of a little fun, and it just shows how far Jason has come. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, 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 you know, to, uh, he said, Hey, I want to show you this. And he showed me this commercial and it's a, a local, uh, IPA, correct? Yep. Yep. Uh, Atlanta based. Well, they have a, correct. they have a location in Atlanta and I think the other one is in Virginia beach. They have two locations, right. but yeah. And he showed me this commercial and it looks really serious at first. Like this is a Bigfoot, like little mini doc. And then all of a sudden, yeah. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden it turns. Yeah. <laughs> a little I bit. love it. But you know what's it. interesting? Just to just to kind of preface the video real quick, when they how it what happened is Dave Bakera, I mentioned him earlier. You know he's a BFRO researcher, and uh, you know he had, he's the owner operator of the exhibition Bigfoot, the Sasquatch Museum in Cherry Log, Georgia. I'm not putting a plug in for him, but that's where. And he and I are great friends. I go up there all the time. If you ever get a chance to go there, if you're in Georgia, I highly recommend it. It's a very fluid place. It's always changing, but he's got a lot of cool stuff in there. But um. Anyway, Dave reached out to me and he says, Hey man, I got a question. I got a, uh, he said, I want to talk to you. Can I give you a call here? I got a, I got a, uh, a possible paying gig for you. Cause you know, I'm a musician and you know, I'm a, yeah. I'm a hustler. I like gigs. So I'm like, cool. I thought maybe somebody was having a wedding reception at the museum or something. I could see somebody doing that, you know, especially in our circles of, of course, you know? So he, I called him and I said, what's up? And he told me how this production company where they were doing this, uh, brewery promotion and they they were going to do in the all the interior shots and the thing are done at that museum and he says they wanted me to, to be in it he says i don't have time i'm too old i ain't got i ain't got the time and he says but i know a guy that would be perfect he says and i thought about you would you be interested i'm like yeah that'd be great so the production <laughs> company contacted me they set me up with the set uh it was it was great it was top notch they were really cool to work with but it, it's it was fun i had a lot of fun doing it so I, I guess let's show this this commercial. And I got to tweak the sound a little bit because sure. we're at least on our end we're having issues. I notice on playback there's no issues with the sound whatsoever. So okay. I I think it's being broadcast okay. I think it's just us because sometimes the sound cuts on it. I don't know right. why, probably because of the mixer. But um, so let me let me mute us guys. We're gonna see this commercial. You guys are gonna. I, I loved it. I love it. So <laughs> this is from the, the New Realm uh, Brewing Company. So. And uh, here we go, folks. Enjoy. Do I think we're being watched? Absolutely. 
Is Bigfoot real? Bigfoot is absolutely 100% real. My name is Jason Weaver and I'm a Bigfoot researcher, experiencer. You know, there's believers and there's knowers and I'm a knower. Georgia is very um, active. It's one of, one of the hotbeds in the country. You'll see trees that'll be bent over like this and the top part of the tree will be driven into another tree. That's an example right there. I mean, that's kind of the stuff that they do. Some have seen them uh, as big as 12 foot, allegedly, but the average is usually anywhere from seven to nine foot tall. Sasquatch need plenty of cover, lots of wooded areas, lots of uh, forest areas. They need plenty of fresh water. This is not a subject you could just bring up to anyone. Uh, a lot of people will look at you like your cheese is slipping off your cracker if you, if you talk about such things. This is the buttocks imprint. Uh, I believe the print was left in the snow or the mud. That's a, that's a butt right there for sure. One of my techniques that I use uh, to lure Bigfoot out of hiding is gifting them things. The best tool you can take in that situation is always keep an open mind. Well, what about this? This work? New Realm Hazy Like a Fox IPA. I don't think anybody's ever gifted a craft beer, so fruit's a big uh, integral part of their diet. So uh, a fruity flavor and it's smooth, I think it'd be a great option. So what if we are big enough for Bigfoot? <laughs> I don't think that's ever been tried. You guys are crazy. We sat here. His shoulders would probably be right about there. Size for a Bigfoot. What I'm going to do is project the sound of this can of beer opening, and the sound will carry for miles into the woods in, in hopes of bringing them back here to the bar. Get the scent in the air. Hopefully, any motion that comes into our area will catch it on camera. And of course, I love that. <laughs> oh my God. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I enjoyed it. Oh, now, hilarious. interestingly enough, when they did their live feed for this thing, they had, uh, you know, there's people watching it. You know, they did a 24 hour live feed and people watched it from, you know, like 11 p.m. on nightly. And they got still shots of eye shine and all sorts of stuff. And <laughs> this place that they filmed at was just on the edge of a wildlife management area here, just, just a couple of miles sure. away from the museum. And, you know, to th to know that people are watching the live, I don't have time to do that. I can't sit there and watch that stuff. You know, it was raining. I can't watch it for 20. But every once in a while, they're, you know, on their Twitter feed. I follow the brewery's Twitter feed. Hey, somebody spotted something. So I save the picture and then put it through my Photoshop and so, you know, enhance the contrast and the exposure. And lo and behold, there's eyeballs there. And I'm like, yeah, so, okay. So, Jason, just some of the comments we're getting. Uh, Tack, our good friend Tack Mike over there, uh, yeah. who's recuperating. That, uh, that is the best marketing I've seen in a long time. Oh, great. Our yeah, good friend I, Nick said, What a great ad. Yeah. Beer mug, smiley, thumbs up. Uh, Diane, uh, great commercial and show. Thank you, Diane. It was a good. It's a good. I love that commercial. I love Charlie it. Wonton says, Great. Do you also have sake? <laughs> <laughs> we don't want him to get too crazy. I know sake, sake kind of makes me a little. That rice wine, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Uh, Pat Turner says, "Get them drunk for them off their game." <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, what I was going to suggest, if you all do, please, please go. If you, they're on all social media, but they're big. They're very active on Twitter. Go by New Realms uh, Twitter site, and however you tweet the twat and all that kind of stuff, whatever you do. I'm not a Twitter guy. I was on there for a while. And I'm a bit opinionated and people didn't like my opinion. And <laughs> so I turned it off, you know, but, uh, but let them know. And Zach, the brand manager, I'll, I'll let him know about your, your interview. Yeah. He actually did a paper on Bigfoot when he was in elementary school and has been fascinated about it for years. So, it, you know, we're, I, we're talking about doing, you know, some in-house promos. I don't know what, um, I have Bob Gimlin's home phone number. I might call him, see maybe he'd be interested in doing a live feed. I don't know what it's going to do, but. This COVID business has really kind of jammed up the the works, you know. But uh, the, the the commercial was a blast. It really was, yeah. and 
Yeah. What and I was going to tell you is at the very beginning of that commercial, when I say, do I think we're being watched? Absolutely. That was just after there was a rock throwing incident. And I, I'm well, I'll set it up for you. I have to tell you the story, how it worked out. I'm facing, uh, facing two cameras. I have a, um, a director and assistant director, each one on each camera, you know, various sound people lighting, you know, there's probably a cluster of maybe 20 people filming me all clustered together, like Scooby-Doo and the, and the gang, you know, and, uh, and then behind them, probably 15, 20 feet are all the, uh, assistants makeup, you know, all those other, probably 15 or 20 other people sitting in the back. Well, as the director is asking me questions, I'm looking at the camera and, and, but I'm, I'm t looking at, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the director, but the camera's on my face, you know, so you know how they, they set these shots up. And I watched the director's eyes get really big for a second. And, you know, when his eyes get big, I turn around just in time to see a cantaloupe sized stone hit the ground and bounce and roll. Okay. And <laughs> I'm not making this up. This is what happened. So I look at him and I go, did you guys do that? And, and they're all just like, you know, no, I don't know. You know, and if they were pulling my leg, they did a good job. And <laughs> cause I, I got a little mouthy and I got a very, I said, look, I take this very seriously. I said, so if you guys are effing with me, I'm going to get very upset, you know? And they're like, no, no, we're good. And I'm like, okay. You know, and then I stepped back from it. That was my fear talking. Number one, you know, it wasn't that they are messing with me, but my fear got, got the best of me. So when I say, do I think we're being watched? I'm shaking in my boots right there, you know? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. There's nothing right, like method you know? acting, right? Yeah, no acting there. But I, I want to go back to the area. I know where it is. I'd like to go back to the area. And also, I've approached the production company about getting the footage that's around that certain spot. And they said, normally, they take a finish, they, they'll take the finished product and give you a shareable version for your reel. You know, if you're an actor, to put on your reel. Well, I, I'm a real dude, you know, R-E-A-L, you know? So I asked them for if I could have that footage and they're like, well, we're going to have to get permission from the customer, which is the brewery. If they could you mind, you know, so I, I, I've talked to Zach about it. Zach says, I'm cool with it. You know, I'll talk yeah. to my guys. And so I'm hoping it goes through these slow channels, you know, the, yeah. Well, the, you, you can tell Zach from, from us, we love that commercial. And, yeah, I will. Definitely. And, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say we have, we have at least one Canadian in the audience and they usually have the right to say this. And Cameron Run, uh, Young just said a little while ago, you just gave Renee DeHinden from Kokanee ha! a run for his money. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that, that's hey, a great. Thank you very much. I appreciate and, that. And uh, our good friend Alan said that sake might work for the Chinese urine. <laughs> right. right. Moonshine worked for the Georgia boys, I think. You might want to get some of that shine down there. That, that, it's just, you talk about tearing some trees down. That might just do it, oh, you know. Because yeah. when I drink shine, I want to wrestle a Mack truck. That's why I don't drink it very much. I always say I'm allergic to moonshine. Every time I drink it, I break out in handcuffs. So <laughs> I, you know, I don't drink that moonshine no more. But uh, yeah, well, Saki it, it, would do it for you. Saki gets you a little wild too. I ain't kidding. And, and Mick says, if you ever get a Sasquatch drunk, you better have an extra large pack, pack of Durex handy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suggested that they build a second bar stool. I said. Who wants to drink alone? You know, I like, know. A second bar stool, so you can go. But hey, babe, come on over. You know. But I love the huge mug filled with the beer. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I, and I'm not a big IPA guy. You know, it's and it had kind of a you know they they put with a hint of fruit in it. You know, and that kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, yeah. But I mean, it it was all right, but not the first. It's kind of like drinking grapefruit flavored beer is what it tasted huh? like. If you like that, you know, it's an acquired taste. And, and but, our good friend Mick speaking as another Canadian. He agrees as well. So everybody, <laughs> lo everybody loved him. We got, we got a great audience. They got it. They know our sense of humor. So they, they tend to, to, to throw our, our types of sense of humor around in the, in the chat. Well, so. well, they'll love the fact that the new realm has a, has another uh, flavor out. It's called Jack Squatch. And it's like a heavy, dark IPA and the cans are cool. And I'm supposed to be getting some from from the brewery you know i gotta get down there or whatever they're located downtown on the on the belt line but um but yeah the cans are really cool you can google them or duck duck go stay away from google do the duck duck go thing and and check out jack squatch ipa and the, the cans are really cool i just want a six pack to sit back here on my 
Hey, you know I'm what? Like, you know, my collectible I'll, I'll, thing. I'll run their commercial for a full year. All I have to do is send me a case of beer. I'm oh, good with yeah, that. Yeah, that sounds great. I'll be <laughs> happy to tell Pass them. Pass that on. Pass well, that I know on Zach will watch the show once I tell him about it. Yeah. You know, I'll send him the link when, you know, when it gets shareable or whatever. But uh, yeah, he'll love that. So you just keep yeah. talking that stuff, Steve. He'll like that. Hey, you can pay me in beer. I'm good with that. <laughs> there you go. I'm good with it too. I like beer. I like t-shirts. I like that. You know, I'm good cool with that. But uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, again, there has been the request. Every time we run an ad, somebody throws up that our good friend Godzilla out there says, you know, is it time? Uh, <laughs> is it time for our regular sponsor? We, we run our, our, our foe sponsor. So I don't know if you've ever seen our Snapple commercial, Jason. Uh Uh-uh. No, I haven't. Okay. So I I think just for fun, we're going to run the Snapple commercial because we haven't done that in in, in a while. Usually we run about once every six or eight weeks and get people to chuckle because it's now obviously you've been following this. So you know the characters involved in this. So let me adjust the sound and we'll get back. Out there, well, I suggest to get a delicious, refreshing Snapple. Yes, rush to the store to get themselves their favorite beverage, a delicious peach Snapple. No need to be cranky when you can just ask just the, your loved one right for a delicious I don't want beverage. Got it? Yo, give me a snap. And don't be in such a hurry, there's plenty at the store. Get me a diet peach snapple. Just peach snapple. No, get me a snapple. So, yeah, we, we haven't run that one in a while. <laughs> I yeah. love it. See some old f- familiar faces in there. Yeah. <laughs> or one in particular, anyway. So, anyway, yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love Snapple. It's one I, of my favorites. I love it. I wish, because I'm a diabetic, I wish they would make a diet mango. Because they have that mango one that's really good. I've taken a sip of the... I'm like, oh, if they only made this in a diet, I drink that one all the time. Yeah. But uh <laughs> well, you know, I don't know how old you are, but I I've been a little fearful of the, the word mango. It's a little scary to me. But uh, but I drank uh I, I managed to scoop a bottle up of cranberry mango mixed juice, and that stuff was pretty good. Yeah. So and you know, and it's good for you too, you know. So, but uh that's as close to the mangoes. I, I'm not, I don't know, I don't. I don't know if I had some bad mango once or something, but it's just not my my thing. Uh, you know, I'm yeah, not a fruit. I like so- I'm if I'm drinking, I don't drink much, but I like hard ciders. I'm a cider guy. Yeah. They don't fill me yeah. up like beer and you know that kind of stuff. But um, I'm trying to get off Coca Colas. They're they're really hard. Right. I I get the. Do you all get the Mexican Coca Colas up there in New York? No, yet, or, no. Have you ever had them? Nope. Well, they're made with a cane sugar. They're made like they were when yeah. we were kids. Oh, okay, actually. yeah, yeah. We do have it. They don't call them Mexican uh, cokes here, but yeah, but they um, um they sell them in the. I used to think it was my own. You, you can only get them in Mexican grocery stores. What's interesting is that the syrup is made here in Atlanta. It's shipped to Mexico, and then Mexico bottles it there and sends it to us. You know, but uh, I love it, and they sell it in the gr- grocery stores and places yeah. like that. You can't get them down there north of north of. You can, can you get them in North Carolina, Chris? Uh, well, I've seen them in Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. oh, yeah I'm sorry. I, I thought you were Alan. Alan's in North Carolina. I saw him flash up. Yeah. You're in Kentucky. Can you get them in Kentucky? Yeah. Well, it, it doesn't say Mexican Coke, but it says, uh, Refresco uh, or whatever on it. The one, uh, the one with the cane. Oh, Carlos. Good yeah. to see you tonight. KTT. Also good to see you tonight. We had in Godzilla. We're just doing the quick run through. There's a few others that we missed, uh, earlier. That's count- <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> I, I can't get that to go. <laughs> we have a we have a drink here in Kentucky called Ski. And oh yeah, I, I love Ski. I, I can't find it anywhere else. I mean, it's in the South, but 
even if I go to Louisville, like you go in a store up there, there's no ski anywhere. You know, you ask them, do you have any ski? And they're like, what are you talking about? We, we don't ski around here. There's no snow. You know? <laughs> yeah, they're good. They're ski, they're an ale, right? Like a ginger ale almost? Well, it's a, yeah, it's a citrus drink. It's, it's, yeah. it's lim, uh, orange and lemon juice mixture and lime. And it's, it's really good if you like the, Juicy drink. You know. It's carbonated, yeah. though, right? Isn't it? Is it it's carbonated. carbonated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, and, uh, and, and making connections too on this show. We just want to let you know Pat Turner oh. is also from uh, right. Northern Georgia, also a researcher and a podcaster too. Cool. So, All right. Cool. So yeah, so so tell me, uh, um, <laughs> what was the most fun you? What was the scariest thing you've had on a Bigfoot research mission? Besides getting rocks thrown at you, you know, obviously when you're doing a commercial. Yeah. Well, it's funny. It's interesting. You bring that up. I'm going to step out again and I got to fill my coffee cup, but I can, I'm, I can do things with one hand. So we're good. Yeah, go but, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, taking, asking, I'm yeah. on my, my, that's iPhone, what she so, said. Yeah, <laughs> She knows it too. <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, what were, what were we talking? Oh, the scariest thing. Uh, I'm, uh, we usually do this. We've been doing this <laughs> camp out. It's a kind of a, twice a year deal and it's it kind of got whittled down to once a year and then we weren't really sure if we were going to do it this year but we just decided a bunch of us that aren't afraid of germs and whatnot uh we went ahead and we're going to get together and we're camping the second weekend in october at this place that we go to um it's a very active area i've i made a promise not to tell anybody the name of it but it's a very active area and um they, not just for, I mean, I don't know where people are with the, with the paranormal ghosts, you know, that kind of stuff. But this yep. place is a very active area for not just the big fellas, but the, um, but a lot of, uh, you hear, you know, drumming, you know, come mysterious drumming and you see orbs in the woods and, and I know I'm dark right now, guys, cause I, that's okay. I, I, we can I, still but, hear you. <laughs> okay. But they, um, the first couple of camp outs that I went down there. I had, um, we were talking about Mexican Cokes. I love those. So I'll usually take four or five with me on a camping trip and um, put them in my cooler and pull them out. I, I try to limit myself to one today, one a day because I'm getting too fat on them. Uh, but uh, when I'm done with them, I, I got a, a milk crate that I, I haul out my stuff, you know, my garbage and that kind of stuff. And so I'll put the glass bottles in that, uh, in that crate and lo and behold they came into the they come right into the camp and you can hear them come into where we camp and i have to wear earbuds on my ears so i don't hear them because i don't want to poop my sleeping bag okay <laughs> so but um they come in and um took the took two coke bottles out of the one of the, out of this crate i keep behind my tent and the, the, the next night you can hear them tinking them in the woods put knocking them together you know i i've heard that actually ha happen <clears throat> Many years ago, in um, near Honubi uh, in the Arbuckle Mountains, uh -huh. um, where a, a couple of propane cylinders were taken out of the back of a truck at one time. It was that and, Randy Harrington, I think. It was yes, Randy yeah, Harrington. yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, and, that, I know that Bing, and, and I, I've actually heard the audio tapes. I have a copy of the audios to that, right? And uh, that was years ago. And uh, and Keith Worley's in the house. Hello, Keith. Good to see you, my friend. Welcome Great looking you. family there. Um, that was one of the scariest things. And then I had another situation. Now, this has been written about in a book. Uh, and uh, the incident, what happened was I had an eye shine incident happen. Now, I, you know, there's a lot of people that are on, you know, in various different camps when it comes to eye shine. Mm -hmm. But we were, we were in a cluster group of about five or six guys. And my dog Cash, I'm I'm a big Johnny Cash fan. I'm a huge Johnny Cash fan. So, you know, uh, there's you know Jesus is here and Johnny Cash is here, and I don't think that they have the same initials. Uh, just uh, it's not a coincidence, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but anyway, so I have a dog named Cash, and and he's a he's a great big footer. He whisper barks when they're around and that kind of stuff. He's super cool. It's very very in tune with what's happening out in the dark. Better than I am because I'm shaking in my shoes usually. And uh, we were in, we were all clustered together, and we're uh, we're watching. We have all the lights off on this one trail in this area that we camp in, and we see how it's set up. Is we're on a trail, and then to our left it slopes down, and there's a creek, 
and then it's it, there's a slope that goes up and there's a ridge there and on that ridge slope there we see these yellowish white eye shine mm -hmm. okay now we don't have any lights on at all no flashlights or anything we had them to get to that spot but we have them all turned off no cell phones no light at all and there's campgrounds behind the behind this ridge where you can see some light, you know, this, they'll, they'll have lights on the walking paths and that kind of stuff, but it's just a glow. There's no direct shine light or anything. So we see these eyes. And earlier that day, I have a friend here in, in, uh, in Georgia who, who camps with us. His name's Brian Holcomb. And he's one of these audio guys. He's got the parabolic mics and he records audio and he gets a lot. He's got them on his property and he's caught some, some a couple of really good audios. And one of them was, a. I'll try to mimic it. It was a whoa, like that, you know, like a whoa. And you could hear it clearly. So as we're standing in a in the little cluster watching this eye shine, we're all just staring at it and nobody's doing anything. And you could see this thing swaying, you know, from behind the tree and coming out. And you could clearly see these eyes. I'm not saying they were bright like flashlights, but you could see them mm -hmm. clearly. So I decided to get nutty and I give out a whoa. <laughs> and these eyes sockets got bigger and they turned an orange amber color i mean right in front of us and the guy that was uh that was in one of our groups his name's keith bearden i, I, don't, I don't know if y'all i'm sure yeah, I, I know keith, keith, bearden. Yeah. keith goes jason no don't do that and i said are we just gonna stand here and stare at each other we're we gonna try to learn something you know because i got yeah. tired of staring let's do something you know let's see what happens well, we watched that happen. That was a pretty scary incident too, you know? So those are two that have happened to me. And then I had another incident happen on this property. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm getting all, you know, all hooky and crazy. No, 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 no. See, the way, the way uh, the, the, to me, and, and mind you, and I'll say this, I have probably had about, oh, probably a handful and a half of, what I call close encounter experiences, but I never saw anything. It may, maybe I shine. Right. It may be a shadow move real quick where I can't really see definitively um, may hear some things that definitively don't make any sense. Right. You know that, you know, it's the people that see Bigfoot every time they go out. That's the, exactly. Yeah. Right. You gotta, you yeah. know, you, you do, you gotta take everything with a grain, of course. Right. Yeah. But um, with this area that we camp, I have a, a normal routine. Usually we'll camp there from Thursday until Sunday. And then Sunday morning I get up early and I break camp and break down my tent and everything. And I load them all in the back of my car. And then we have about a two hour drive from this area back to my house here. And so uh, I always take cash for a good walk so he can do his business. And cause he, he likes to travel, but he doesn't like to ride. So he'll get in the car and he just lays down. He don't want to see where we're going or anything. He just wants to lay down until we get there. But uh, uh, so he's, we're walking up this one trail and you know, I don't take equipment. You know, I don't, I don't, I, the only, we're, the only thing I do is I take an eye one of those little iPods. I have a little, I don't know what generation it is, but it's a little slim iPod that has a, a video camera on it. And I'll turn the camera on and I'll put it on lock. And I, I have a little case that I can put on the back side of, of on my belt. So I have it filming behind me on the trail. And I've got a, I, I've lost the iPod. It has all the footage on it, but I haven't had anything on it. You know, any, yeah, I haven't seen anything, but I'm, you know, I'm practicing a, a theory here that, they're going to pop out behind you before they pop out in front of you, you know, is what I'm yeah. thinking. So, yeah. uh, so I've got my iPod set up and all of that. Got it in my, you know, my belt and cash and I are walking up this, this trail. And it's the exact same trail that I told you we had had this eye shine on and, uh, a couple of nights earlier. And when I'm walking up the trail to my left, I keep seeing a flash of dark. And what I thought it was, was a hawk flying from tree to tree or something or a dark bird of some type every time i turned to look to my right i i couldn't see it but as we were walking up the trail in my peripheral i would see it well i decide to do a kind of a big flash deal like what i mean by that is i decide to act like i'm walking forward and then i stop and turn real quick and when i did this i see this black figure duck down and I'm always the crown of its head. And I'm like, I see you, you know, 
and I'm looking at it and Cash is standing there and he's, he knows there's something over there. And, uh, so I see the top of his, the crown, you know, just the top of his head. I see it moving just a little, just a little bit. And under my breath, I'll clear it up. I'm going to put my phone down so you can see my face. There we go. I, uh, I'll clean it up for you. Cause I have a tendency to drop expletives right out there in the woods sometimes, you know? <laughs> yep. So under my breath, kind of like this, I went, no effing way is what I said. No effing way. And all of a sudden I, I get this feeling and I get this tone in my ear, in my head. I'll say a sound in my head and it's a, it's my voice <coughs> and it's going, no, 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 no. Very, you know, I had a very rhythmic chanting type rhythm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it split into two tones and then it split into four tones and then it kept splitting like this, you know, it'd be layers of these tones at, at different, at different, you know, notes or whatever. I'm a musician. So I think like that, you know, mm -hmm. and the next thing I know my whole body is vibrating. My teeth are chattering. I'm shaking and I'm looking at my, I'm looking at cash now the entire time. And he's looking at me like, are we moving? And it's not hitting him. He's not being affected by it at all. And I'm hearing, still hearing this. No, no. It's like having Gregorian chant chanting in my head. Okay. Now I'm not saying that this is Bigfoot related. I'm not saying that, but this happens to me and I'm, I'm shaking. My teeth are chattering. And then it just stops and I, I still feel it in my body and I'm scared. Okay. And I'm like, let's get out of here cash. And usually he walks off the leash, but at that point I put the pop the leash on him and we booked it back down that hill and got in the car. And like I said, it was about a two hour drive. And I was so shaken by this that I don't remember the drive at all. I had bits of teeth, like I had sand in my mouth where my teeth had vibrated together so much that I had grit in my teeth and I didn't feel right. I, and I brought, brought it home and, uh, that, that evening, you know, I found a couple of ticks on cash and I found a couple of ticks on me and I start thinking, well, maybe I've got Lyme disease. You know, I, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I don't feel myself. And, and the only way I can describe it is I felt like. When I was shaking, something took me apart on a molecular level and put me back together and either left something out or put something extra in. Okay. And, uh, well, you've and just described something that we talk about quite a bit on this show. And Alan just popped the magic word out there. Yeah. Uh, infrasound. Yeah. That's what I think it was. I think yeah. I got, I got, what do they call it? zapped <laughs> yeah that, that's right yeah that's the untechnical term for, yeah but it still it stayed with me i'm telling you for months and then uh, what, the thing is is that it's still with me as far as the physical feeling now how it far beca it became my new normal i hate using yeah. that word new normal yeah. i hate that but yeah. that, <laughs> that became my new normal this feeling this is what i have you know and now let me let me ask you a question how far were you from this silhouette Oh, probably 20, 25 feet. So not, not very far, not far at all. Um, and yeah, I, you know what, I, I mean, when I took my attention off, I was looking at the, I totally forgot about it over here. And then when I remember, you know, when I, when I zapped out of it or I, you know, when it stopped, I immediately looked over there and it was gone. And that's when I went, <gasps> cause I didn't know where it was, you know, whatever it was, but I know that those two things are related. I'm not saying no. that dark figure I saw was a Bigfoot, but no. whatever I saw, I think, and what I was feeling were yeah. related. So, you know, and, and that, and that's a very well-grounded thing. And, and I say that to people too, is, you know, some people say that, Hey, you know, I saw this Bigfoot and it disappeared in front of me and they're a Bigfoot researcher. Well, maybe you didn't actually see a Bigfoot. Maybe it was something on the paranormal side that you saw that was manifesting as a Bigfoot because that's what's in your mind. That's, you know, it, yeah. it, you know, and that's, I try to, you know, infrasound is one thing and, and yes, Chris and I both have experienced infrasound. Yeah. in our respective research areas. And I, I remember years ago, you know, Chris saying, you know, you ever get that little twitch in your ear, like a little vibration in your ear. And I'm like going, no, Chris, no, no, I, I haven't. That's <laughs> kind of weird. And then like three years later, it happened to me and it was followed up by this feeling of being watched. And like, I don't feel like I should be here. 
type of yeah. feeling. Yeah, exactly. And that's only yeah. happened to me a couple of times. Strangely enough, it's never happened to me when I've had a sighting. Because I've had two sightings. One of a juvenile. Uh, the first one was actually a longer one. It was about 45 seconds. Felt no fear at all, except for, except for the big stare down. Like, I think it's watching me, but it's mm. not quite sure if I see it. So yeah. it's kind of just standing really still, except for, you know, a, a, a quick tertiary look around when it first saw me. Yeah. <clears throat> and it wasn't until I just moved my light a little bit, and then it decided just to turn around and walk off. Yeah. And the second time was coming out of my tent, and I see this five-and-a-half-foot juvenile, five-foot, five-and-a-half-foot juvenile going... Must have heard me get out of tent, so it took off. Yeah. And both times, the first time with the adult, it was watching our campfire, and we were all in campfire, and I kind of walked out by my lonesome very quietly to get batteries, and there it is. Oops. And the second time, everybody was sleeping, and it probably was looking around, and it didn't expect me to come out of the tent, and when it did, it said, I better get out of here. And well, uh, Yep. Go ahead, Chris. I, I was just going to say that when uh, Tommy and I got hit with that infrasound, uh, those creatures were a, a approximately 120 feet away. Wow. And it was, it was enough when it hit me. Well, it hit Tom, well, hit, hit myself, Tommy and myself at the same time. We both, you know, like thought something was like fl trying to fly into our ear yep. and uh, it was, it was pretty intense. And so I'm thinking, you know, that was like 125 to 135 feet away. Now, if Jason was like 20, 25 feet away, he, he must have got hit with a really strong, you know. Right, right, yeah. Well, the, the, the other thing, too, is people people say, well, you know, Chris Bennett, what? 120 feet isn't that very long distance. Well, infrasound can travel for hundreds yeah. of miles. The blue yeah. whales communicate them. Uh, for a hundred miles away, and yes, yeah. Tack reminded me also. I did. We we did have another sighting. It was actually a group sighting. A few of us saw it, and it was off on another hill. It was a daytime sighting, yes. and uh, that was that was our third one. No no creepiness there. Just that, that you know we were, we we pushed a little deeper into an area. I don't really talk. This was actually in twenty. I want to say twenty seventeen. I believe this had, had happened, and it was actually. I believe it was July, and we had walked into an area, and we got uh, that we normally don't push into because that's closer to their territory where there's been more aggressive type of things that went on. And we walked in. We came up on the on the crest of a hill, and I pulled out my binoculars, and and we were all looking. And we saw something like walk in between a couple of trees off in the distance. And a couple of us had binoculars up or, or and we saw uh, what appeared to be a reddish brown figure because it was sunlight out and it just was like, and it was gone. But we could see it was whatever it was, was upright, moving fast. And it was brown and reddish, had long hair. Ooh. And it was, it was just like, bang. Can I describe it? No. Can I describe? Well, there was the head, there was the shoulder. No, I just saw this long haired, vertical not horizontal creature vertical going from tree to tree and it was way too tall or high up on a tree to be something like a bear and truthfully bears are not brown up my way they're black um because we have black bear we don't have any brown bears in in new york state so um yeah it was and we were all like wow that was that was really quick but that's you know what we expect in the daytime, we, you know, and of course, like I said, it was probably 7,500 yards out. You know, I, I don't really yeah. recall, but because it was just that quick and I was looking through binoculars. So you kind of lose that depth perception of where exactly it was. Um, you know, we, we pushed over to the other hill and nothing, uh, couldn't find any tracks or anything like that. But, um, you know, the rest of the day was pretty uneventful, but, it never ceases to amaze me that, you know, uh, infrasound can travel for hundreds of miles, and that's how blue whales communicate. Now, I know infrasound will travel further in ocean, but we're talking, you know, 120 feet versus 150 miles. So yeah. one would think that if it would travel 150 miles projected strong enough in water, it would probably easily surpass 150 feet in the air from something well, as massive as the Sasquatch. Well, and I, I would just want to add something that, you know, I, I think what they did was infrasound, but I'm not certain. Yeah. Uh, the, the description of it fits, 
but they they can do something. <laughs> Whatever it is they can do, it makes you very uncomfortable. And it is there are physical, you know, you can feel it physically when it well, happens. Well, you know, there, there's there's guys out there that are vocalists, you know, right. that are you know deep deep bass vocalists that they right. can hit certain tones that will drive you to go unconscious or cause somebody's heart to palpitate or whatever because the tone the the vibration that's yep. in that tone right. affects the energy that they i mean so infrasound is a it's a real deal it's a real right. people say yeah they scoff yeah. at it but it's, it's a real the deal. um now, what, I'm not what I mean, that's what it was but that i think that's what it was i think I got those that, you know Me those too. throat singers uh the, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 um uh, Alan made a great, great point, and I, I've made it a, a point out too uh, when doing my book. What would Sasquatch do? Is that uh, multiple known species produce infrasound? The only commonality is uh, um, the only commonality is that they are always the largest of the species. Like the biggest cats can use infrasound. Tigers, and lions, the biggest elephants, yeah, elephants, elephants, yeah, big animal. Blue whales, the biggest of the whales, can use infrasound. <laughs> So if a squatch is a biggest of the primates, it would make perfect sense for uh, uh, it would make perfect sense for it to use infrasound. And uh, Mike, Mike even said, I saw Steve react to something. So, <laughs> you know, because Mike was there that day. Mike, Mike was there actually there cool. that day, uh, when it happened. I don't know if Mike, Mike actually didn't see it. The other Mike I was with saw it, and so did hit the person he brought with him. Uh, all three of us saw it. And uh, what Tack did was he was shooting pictures, bang, 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 bang. And he found the pictures, and he sent them to me, and he goes, I think we may have something. I looked at him, I go, oh, I don't see it. Damn it. Yeah. You know, I, I just, you know, so it, it, was, it was just, you know, if there is something in there, it, it blended in so well that, you know, could it be something else? Yeah, could it? So... Really, it's not anything that we could say. Hey, there's a, a you know a Bigfoot there, positively, you know, uh, you know, sketchy at best. So we we don't put that out there. Right? That's the hard. Just, yeah. That's the hard thing about photos. Unless you got something that's definitive, uh, it's hard to say, and, and especially you know these days. <laughs> you know, I, and this is a challenge to Mick. I want a picture of the X's meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> We don't believe it exists. <laughs> oh man, it's a, it's had a profound effect on him, though you can tell. So, yeah. so, uh, you know, Jason, we, uh, Chris, and I have had a very hard day today. Um, you know, I like I said, this was, uh, yeah, yeah. Poor, poor Mike. I didn't see it. I was at the wrong angle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we were all looking at eleven o'clock. Mike's looking over there, looking at three o'clock. Where is it? No, I'm just <laughs> um, but but Chris and I have had a, a a long hard day. Of course, Chris is rebuilding that home, and, and you know the amazing yeah. thing about this show is that over the weeks we have seen that room behind him change <laughs> and grow into a real room. Right on. Like right now, area. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm surprised. You know, he took his hard hat off just for the show. Oh, it's <laughs> off. Okay, I was just yeah. Oh yeah, that's that, that's that's his uh, actual head. That's not. Oh okay, movie. all right. My yeah. glasses aren't the best, Chris. I'm not making a shot at you. I promise. <laughs> I have terrible glasses. You know, so yeah, right, yeah. I'm just. But you're talking about setting up your room. I just want to show. You can't see with my lighting here, but I'm a Johnny Cash nut, as I said, and I've got. I've been. Hey, this is going to become my my music room and recording studio. If I can figure out how to hook up the stuff, I'm an analog guy in a digital world. So <laughs> I have the makings of a complete studio, but I don't know how to hook it up and set it up and use it. But, um, I've been, uh, approached to do a, a podcast and, um, I'm also, uh, I've been doing a little bit of life coaching and that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hope to help, maybe I'll pick up some how to deal with Bigfoot encounter uh, life coaching, you know, yeah, gigs I, out of there. Hopefully, you that, know, you know I, I that, uh, you know, for somebody like that, that would probably be an awesome, awesome type of show. Have you seen a Bigfoot? You know, we're here to help and we'd like That's to right. let you tell your story judgment free. Yep. Let's deal with the issues that it's caused you. Let's talk about it because, yep. you know, you can say from experience, I've been there. You know, and that, that would be really awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I went back to work this week and uh, oh, good for you. 
the uh normally i do not work sundays um but the sunday the sunday guy does not the sunday team member who uh fills in either the second the second chair uh, when we uh go uh, snooping and pooping <laughs> well he doesn't he doesn't come back to work till tomorrow tomorrow will be his first day back oh wow so i filled in for him today and uh we actually thank goodness we put on uh, a third person and uh in six hours we made four arrests and we were very tired by the end of it was oh, like i yeah. got i gotta go <laughs> i got a podcast right to do so i came home just enough time to eat that's why the uh like i said the links came out a little later than normally i, I send my guests the links at eight o'clock or 7 30 today was 8 30 because i'm like i gotta eat i gotta just chill for a minute right and then i drove home to some bad news which i don't need to discuss and has nothing to do with me whatsoever but has to do with a family member so oh well bad news that, is always bad for some now, now you know if 2020 could suck anymore oh gosh i know it. <laughs> it's so just folks if you're out there listening just uh, say prayers out for that family member for me. I would much appreciate that because that person's going to need it. And uh, hopefully uh, the next few days we'll see how it works. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so we're going to, we're going to cut at the uh, 10 30 hour okay. uh, tonight, as opposed to the 11 o'clock hour, Chris has beat. He's been, like I said, he's been in the construction so zone, right. but I want to thank you for coming on. It was great having you on. It was a lot of fun. Thanks man. I appreciate you having yeah. me on. I, this and, has been a lot of fun. And you know what? Sometimes you have interviews where you got to draw every, everything out of somebody. And those are tough days. Yeah. Today was an easy day for us. And yep. we thank you for giving us an easy day. <laughs> sure. I love to talk. So, you know, <laughs> it, 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 and you know, I don't go talk to everybody about Bigfoot. I say this a lot. I don't talk to everybody about Bigfoot, but if you bring it up, I'm going to talk to you about it. You know. <laughs> so, but yeah. uh, I dig talking about it. And like I said, if I can help somebody out, if you want to uh, reach out with me to me after the show or whatever, uh, you can find me on Facebook. I also have a, um, a, a Sasquatch Bigfoot related uh, group on there called Sequoia Sasquatch Society. You can find me. I, I've got a few vetting questions and uh, that, you know, I'll put you in. It's real easy. I've got, I'm me and two other people are the admins and they've done nothing since I started the show <laughs> so, or started the group. So it's, it's there, but if uh, anybody has any questions, I'm more than willing to talk about it. And you guys have been great. I really appreciate you. Uh, bringing me on board and, uh, oh, and yes. let me talk about all this and uh, all the best to you. Oh, anytime, brother. And if you get another commercial out of this or another commercial oh. comes out, please send it along. We, yeah, will. we will. I will. And yeah, please check out New Realm Brewing's website. Oh. They're really easy. Uh, Twitter, all that. Uh, check out that Jack Squatch beer. That's kind of cool. I thought it was kind of great timing. I don't know if they planned that. I think they did, but I, you know, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I appreciate the, the plug and I, I know they're going to appreciate it too. So yep. well done. And and continued success, my brother, and and you know keep on squatching. Yeah, man. Me and, too. and folks, and folks, uh, just so y'all know, folks, we'll be back here next Sunday night, nine p.m. Eastern. Facebook.com forward slash Steve Coles, YouTube.com forward slash Steve Coles, Twitter.com forward slash Squatch D E T. And you can check replays at SquatchDetective.com, SquatchDTV.com, the SquatchDTV Facebook page, and, of course, the YouTube page. We all have the replays and reruns and all that fun stuff. And for those who haven't have missed episodes of SquatchDTV, you can go over to SquatchDTV.com and check out the archives. We have every show there that we've done on SquatchDTV. And uh, you all you have to do is just click on them. You don't even have to get off the page. You just click and it plays. So, uh, and for our podcasting folks, uh, I, I do want to say this too. Uh, I want to welcome to our tune in listeners because we are now on tune in. Uh, we right now, our, our podcasting is going out to uh, via Anchor FM. It usually gets uploaded Monday morning, which it will get uploaded Monday morning. Uh, so uh, in that, of course, you can catch uh, the audio broadcast on this. So you're going to miss out on a great commercial. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, there you, you can find us at the Apple Store, uh, uh, Google Podcasts, uh, yeah. Stitcher Radio. Uh, and ho hopefully soon we'll be back on iHeartRadio. Um, so check it out at anchor.fm. 
for Squatch DTV. If you are if listening to the car is what you like to do, or just put it on your phone to listen and act like you're working and you're actually listening to our show. So, <laughs> so uh, Chris, as usual, you want to do your thing. Oh man, I just want to thank Jason again for appearing. A uh, great guest, super guest, man. We appreciate it having you. I want to thank all our, all of our listeners. Uh, we had the most educated audience in uh, the radio business, uh, <laughs> internet Ooh. podcasting, and uh, we appreciate them. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, ring the notification bell if you want to. Uh, it, it helps out the channel. Yeah, anything. Yeah, anything that helps out. It'll help out the channel. We really appreciate it. That's Back right. You, Steve. Okay, folks. Well, on behalf of all of us here, we want to wish you a great week, healthy week. God bless. And of course, keep on squatching. See y'all next week, Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. Reba Dirch. watching Squatch DTV. Join us each week, Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for the latest on the Bigfoot mystery. Encourage all to subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Steve Culls. As always, have a great week. Stay safe. God bless. And keep on squatching.